Okay, in this video we're going to break down our little cliff face here. So um, this has been refined. I did uh, some experiments this morning to try and see if I could get something that uh, looks a little bit more rocky and less like the uh, channeled erosion. So this is what I came up with after doing a little bit more experimentation tonight. So let's try and break this down and see what we can get from this. So we're going to go all, all the way back to the beginning. And the first thing that we're going to go through is something that we've been through before. And I'm just doing it in a slightly different way and I'm going to try and run you through the, uh, the basics of it. So uh, this Voronoi, um, for whatever reason, it's not showing the original setup. This actually, the octave should be zero. Um, I'm not sure why it's showing like this, but it's showing like, a, I guess, a previous build of it. Anyways, dropping down the octaves uh, will set your Voronoi to be undistorted. Uh, going through the auto level in uh, some other versions of this, it, it actually provided a result. Um, this particular case, I'm not seeing much change, but it makes sure that I'm getting that uh, upper range. The curvature set to vertical and then setting this from 0 to 99. It's important, do not go to 100, otherwise uh, it will break it. So you want to go from 0 to 99. This will not look like it's doing anything, and that's because at 2K you're not seeing the result, but in the 1K and the 512K you'll see it. And really all this is doing, working at this very low percentage uh, up to the high percentage, it's taking some of the edge values along this line and lifting them up. Uh, the issue that I encounter is, of course, that my line starts to become a little bit broken up, and I don't want it to be broken up. So this basically cleans that up. It just lifts the, um, the lower values up to white. So then I run an aperture on it, uh, aperture expand, and that's going to uh, allow it to be able to survive what I'm going to do to it next which is to uh, apply a slight blur to it. If I try and blur it before that, I'm gonna lose details. So uh, I'll thicken it, I will blur it, and it's at this point that I've converted to um, a mesh preview so that you can see it. Uh, I like to see sometimes in mesh preview to see what's happening. Uh, lines are very deceptive, and so I wanna see that I'm getting clean lines. What I had before this was a very broken up, up and down kind of thing, uh, sort of like this. So there's still a little bit of that, but not as much. So um, I expanded it and now I'm contracting it to bring it back to what it was before. So that contraction really sharpens that edge. My auto level with the logarithmic makes sure that it lifts all the values. So this area and this area here, right, it's evening out everything. So it's trying to even out all the values. I've got a bias gain node used as intensity and intensity only. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to drop all the values down, down, down until I get just the bits that I want to use for slicing. So the very edges. This is going to give me my nice little thin lines to, to cut with. After bias gain, um, lower intensity, those values still exist below the plane. So uh, we go with a clip. So clamp, set it to clip, and that will eliminate anything that is not currently visible. After that, I am free to go ahead and apply the displacement. So rather than having the displacement in here, we get it at the very end. And just so you can see what that's doing, it's giving me this nice, cool, cracked fracture effect. Okay, so now I have to build the base shape for my cliff face. What I'm looking to do is create a lot of chaos. I want to be able to see lots of different layers of details, and so that is my goal. The first thing I'm going to start off with is going with Voronoi. Voronoi right here, I have some shapes. So I've set it to dual. I set it to a C-type form, 
and what I've done here is I've adjusted my two scale values. The Y value is much larger. I'm going to around eight, whereas this is three and a half. And that's gonna make sure that some of these are, well, all of them are a little bit longer. They have sort of a directionality to them and the directionality is going in the Y direction. I wanna be consistent with that with my different Voronoi layers that I'm gonna be applying there. So uh, some of them won't be scaled smaller here. They'll only be scaled smaller here just so I get that. So this other Voronoi, also eight, but you notice this one is set to one. These ones are longer. And I'm gonna go ahead and combine them, set to difference, 100%. So this gives me my first layer of additional complexity. I've got long shapes and shorter shapes overlapping each other, giving me lots of breakup. Let's add some more detail. I'm gonna go and do another Voronoi. This one is a D-type Voronoi. This D-type Voronoi is basically like an inverted version of the stone-looking Voronoi. So where you have um, definitive stone sort of shapes that are created with uh, clear paths at them. This one is sort of the upside-down version of that. And so it gives me a lot of things that I can use to cut in. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to subtract with it. So this one uh, you'll notice the value, this is set to 1, but we've got our uh, scale y around 5, and again it's another dual. And each one of these I've been playing with the influence so that they're not too high, otherwise they would be all the way up here. So changing their influence. So I've gone from all of this to this. So went from flat to shaped, textured. So now they've got form to them. Let's add a little bit more detail. So this one is a P-type. Again, five and a half, dual, low influence. And uh, you can play with that, that height because you're going to be trialing back and forth with some of these just to get a look that you want. Um, the, the one thing that you have to watch out for is you see how some of these areas have gone to flat. Um, I don't want that all the way throughout, but uh, a few areas right here in this early stage, it's fine. And especially for this next one, because I'm going to apply a difference. What's interesting with difference, as opposed to a lot of the, the other ones, is that difference is, um, versus, say, subtract. If I go ahead and cut away from something with subtract, it'll go to zero, meaning flat areas. With difference, if it goes to, to uh, zero, it'll pop back up again. It goes back in the opposite direction. So it's kind of like you know multiplied by negative one. So if it goes into a negative value, then suddenly it goes up, right? So um, parts of it will go down, parts of it will go up, and we get that variation, and it ensures that it fills in the gaps. If I'd just gone with separate, I wouldn't have had that, and I would have you know, had blank areas. So difference is helping me get those other raised areas. So lots of variation. So from this to that. Okay, so that's what I'm getting from basic Voronoi shapes. I could probably layer some more in there, but I wanted to get some very interesting shapes, something a bit different than what I'm going to get from these, these primitives. So I'm still going to start off with the Voronoi, but I'm going to use the new mode uh, as of um, this uh, version uh, 1019, and that's the iterative displacement. So right here, I've gone ahead and adjusted the scale. I'm about 13 and a quarter and seven and a half here. I'm using an end type. And so we've got these lots of these tiny little flat things here. And this iterative displacement, I'm doing about 10 iterations. It's not too many. But what you have to understand here is that iterative displacement is kind of like adding 10 versions of this node and applying this displacement to it. Got it set to rugged, so I get a lot more variation off of it. And sometimes I'll play with stuff like scale to get a little bit more intensity in a specific direction. But um, this shape, I can't get from any of the primitives. This is the only way to get this shape. 
Now that said, it's also very expensive. So at 2K, it took a little while for it to iterate through this. It went through this process 10 times. Um, the other impact of this is that right now, uh, as it stands, probably change in a future version, but and as it stands with this version, there is no a direction to make it flow. So I have to go to a transform, and that's rotated at an angle. I could have told it to, to mirror the edges. I chose not to. Um, you can try that, and then you won't, maybe you won't have to uh, scale in order to cut off the weirdness that happens at the edges. You get streaking at the edges. So um, I scaled it to clip that rotated it roughly 45 it's not exact 45 but that's not a big deal and then I run aperture with contract to sharpen the shape because I did scale it up right so I wanted to sharpen it a little bit I also took this original shape here and I wanted to rough out these a little bit to get some uh, pitting uh, effect on this rock so I went and did a quick erosion to that and taking that and setting it to difference gives me a pitted look to my new rock formation. So here's my first um, bizarre shape, something a bit more than what I'm getting from this. So I'm combining a small amount of that in there and that's adding some breakup, some chipping all those cool little things to that rocky surface. Let's add a bit more dimension. This right now, it's a good surface texture. It's really great for kind of breaking up the shape, but now I have to add bigger shapes to it. You can't just go small shapes. You have to start getting a little bit larger. So Voronoi right here, this is one of those sort of default Voronois. You may have to play with the seed a little bit to get enough breakup um, for what you want. This was enough for me. Um, I went ahead and added a displace to it. Again, iterative displacement. And this time I went up to 37. My goodness. So again, this is one of those shapes that I cannot get any other way. Um, not even fold is gonna give me this. So iterative displacement. It's the only way to get this uh, from it. Now, 37 times, you can bet that was pretty expensive. It took a little while for it to chew through that. And I just copied my transform node from before and pasted it. And uh, lo and behold, it's traveling the same direction as everything else. So we're coming from this base textural shape and adding some more height and dimension. So this is fracturing it, breaking up different levels, which is what I wanted from this. So it's a regular blend. So this was a blend, this was a blend. And now we're gonna move on to um, taking plates and then folding them. And the fold is set with elevate off. Again, it's giving me a lot of bigger shapes I'm going to use that to um, blend yet again. So again, from here to here to here. Lots of variation. Now, I do want to eventually get back some of this um, channeled detail. But for now, I'm going to take it to this next stage which is starting to create the shape of my cliff. So the first thing that I want to do with this is through this constant combining and blending and adding, it's starting to get a little bit higher. And the part of this is coming from the plates, which has a lot of height to it to begin with. So I want to bring it down and I'm just taking the intensity down until I start to see uh, flat areas appear. And then I, I kind of stop just before then. So it's just dropping the intensity, keeping in mind that when you drop intensity, values will exist in the negative range. So I always go with a clamp and clip. And then I have my cliff shape. The cliff shape you want to make sure is not too steep. 
Remember that it's height map information. So if you go too steep, you're going to lose detail. You can always go in afterwards in a 3D app or the software that uh, allow you to manipulate, say, the mesh. Um, and then you could, you know, bend this region down or use like a soft select and kind of pull and prod on it. Maybe ZBrush, Mudbox, Blender, any of those things that have like sculpting tools. You can, you know, grab a big chunk and start to, to move it and shape it. But in here, if you want the detail, you have to have enough of an angle to support that. So this is simple. It's just a constant gradient with it scaled down, the sawtooth turned off, and then I just transformed it backwards and then subtracted it. So that's going to be combined with this and you will see it's set to power and I ended up having to swap inputs you can try you know um, a few different things when you're looking for a way to get a good combination so I went through a whole series of iterations trying to get this to blend nicely and so this is what I found I've got my uh, my base shape plugged into the base and this plugged into the top uh, rather than doing the swap inputs, you could change their order. So you could plug your base shape into the top and this in the bottom, and then you won't have to swap it. So um, in my combine here, set to power, and you can see it starts to look like a cliff face. But I'm losing some of that original detail that I had there. So I'm going to come back off of this other shape here, and we're going to subtract some of that so you can see and you can adjust how much you want but I really wanted it to sort of dig in and really get some of those shapes back in so there it is okay so that fracture that we did before we want to go ahead and add that in so we're going to take that fracture that we talked about in the beginning of this video and we're going to subtract it from this nothing crazy just to subtract I'm leaving it at 50% I don't need more than that I mean I could go deeper if I wanted to I could be more subtle if I wanted to it's really up to you so you can determine how far you want to take it that's how far I took it and just add something it goes against that straight up and down movement it gives me something interesting to look at that goes against the grain So now, I want to eat away at this surface a little bit further. But if I go to Erosion and leave it as default, we start getting that channeled erosion look, right? Everything smooths. I lose all those kind of rock shapes that were there that were interesting. And I could blend back and forth, but no. So uh, if you watched my other video talking about the soft eroded hills, you'll have kind of an idea what I'm about to do next, which is to go into the wear and um, pull out of it. So what I'm doing here um, is pulling the wear out. You don't have to set it through a constant. Um, I like to do that just to see it. Uh, when I'm working, I just want to see what I'm looking at, what it is. I could just go directly from here to here and it would be the same thing. So uh, it's also nice for you to see in the, uh, the tutorials to, to see what it is that I'm doing. So this is going to be carved out of it. So I'm going from this and subtracting uh, about 53%. So I played with the value back and forth until I got something that I liked. So what I'm getting here is a little bit of that channeled shape in there, but I'm keeping a lot of the original rock shapes too. So you can determine how much you want to erode from that. That's up to you. You want to erode less, you want to erode more. It's up to you. So now um, I want to add in some terrain, some grassy areas, uh, soften that slope. So the natural way to do that is to use a snow node, but that's going to cover everything. If that's what I wanted, maybe these were like sand dunes or actual snow, that would be fine. But I want some, you know, some dirt 
quote unquote at the base and uh, filling in these areas up here but I don't want it all through the middle so a way that I can do that um, and something that I do uh, with erosion to eliminate sediment like when I have this right here and you see the piles of sediment that are here uh, I will often combine back with the original and set this to min so that's what I've done here is I've gone from the snow and set it to min and it takes the lowest values however in this particular case I've masked it so I'm only allowing that to happen in this mid region, the area that I want to keep as rocky, and these other areas where I want to keep the snow, that's where it is. I've also taken the snow mask and subtracted this height from it. So using a subtract here, so min here, subtract here, both 100%, and that's going to be used to mask out my grass and my rock. So moving on to that, so I have some sediment at these two different regions, nice rocky main area. So I'm going to do a first pass of texture. The texture node will go in. Excuse some of the dark areas. This is just a visual display bug. Um, it's from these really sharp angles that are in here, and so it's showing up in the cracks. It's not really there. It only happens when it's a color node is active, which in this case is the, the mask. So this one, which is the first pass, it's uh, rough and broken up. And I'm going to send that to some two-tone uh, color. So I've got a green and sort of a, a burnt yellow to break that up. And they're both set to very bright colors. Kind of, I'm going to multiply them with a detail pass. So the detail pass, uh, I'll show you in a moment. But first, this also is going into a sat maps for the rock region. So the rock region, which is this area right here, I've got something high contrast. So I'm going for very light colors versus some very dark colors, and that gives me lots of uh, distinct regions. I'm going to plug that texture into another texture. And what that does is it breaks it up even further. So it bases it on the original shape, but then you get a lot finer details in here. So remember, this is just 2K but you can see how much detail goes into that. And so that goes into the detail for my grass. I'm just giving you little patches and my breakup over there. And when those are mixed together, we get this, which is a little bit too dark and too saturated. So I'm gonna do a HSL, so hue saturation lightness, turn that on adjust the saturation down a tiny smidge, bring the lightness up a little bit until I was kind of happy with the tones that were there. The second texture is also going into this rock detail. So I chose something with a lot of variation, but relatively even, a little variation in color. So it's more the, uh, the, the hue that I wanted variation, hue and saturation, but uh, it's breaking up that pattern fairly nicely. So when combined with the big major patches, we get something like that. So a bunch of sort of dusty little details with the big patchy details. It looks pretty nice. So all of this is going through that height and snow mask uh, subtraction. I auto level to make sure I get the maximum values out of that. And I use a mixer at the end just to blend those. That should actually be 100%. No, it shouldn't. Actually, it looks nicer with the lower values. So there we have it. Hopefully, you got something interesting from there. The key things to remember from this is number one, make sure you start with small shapes and work your way forward and then eventually starting to add bigger shapes to it until eventually you, uh, you get the shape that you want. The other thing to remember 
is iterative displacement is costly. It will take a while to go through. Make sure that you're getting something from it that you can't get any other way. Otherwise, you're just wasting cycles kind of calculating it. So I did two very distinctive shapes from this that I couldn't get any other way, which was this and this. Once you've got uh, those kind of things in place, applying it to your surface and uh, keeping in mind a couple other little tricks like this min where you can go ahead and um, remove stuff that you don't like. Like I said, I use it with erosion all the time where uh, if I don't want the sediment, I'll just combine it back to the original and set it to min and I'll get all the erosion but none of the sediment. So once again, I hope you got something interesting from this process. You learned something new and uh, I look forward to seeing what you guys create in the forums.